work hard like we always work. Don't get lazy. Y'all already know what it is, your boy, y'all call what it do, the outlet to reality, the whole this podcast in Vegas and Chicago, what up? This is the place where you want to hide from your drama, or maybe hide from your baby mama, <laughs> just kidding, y si tu quieres cambiar tu vida, if you want to change your life, then subscribe, Chiching. and by the way guys, I just published a book called Shabbat in Chicago, it's about an audacious single mom who opens her heart and home to five adopted kids while embracing her Latino culture while being Jewish. And today we have a very special guest. I had him bring her back to the show. He is now a world champion of Power Slap, the one and only Isaiah. Woo! What up, y'all? What's up, brother? It's been a long time, man. <laughs> How you guys doing? We're doing good, brother. We're doing good, man. I, I just want to say, man, you know, I got to meet your family for the first time, um, like a couple months back. And uh, I was hoping I got a chance to meet you, but I know it was hard because the fight and everything. So it was tough. But I can tell you this, brother. I sat like literally next to uh, Vernon's wife. I yeah. was next to Vern. And then your family was on the other side. And it was so cool because... We were like cheering all of us. We we're like when when Vern was going and then you were up. We're like, yeah, yeah come on, we got this. That was dope. And it was really cool, brother. I'm gonna be honest. Um, it was good energy, good people, and uh it was amazing. But the fact that you got to go to Abu Dhabi, right? A new country, a new place. If you can take us like that journey of like what you got to do out there any like cool adventures i know the culture is beautiful and then if you can share uh leading to the fight and yeah. winning yeah i mean the culture was awesome i mean everybody was super inviting everybody are you know out there huge fans of power slap huge fan of combat sports in general um but it was cool to be recognized out there by a lot of people so i mean i got recognized more out there than i did out here in the u.s you know but, uh, I mean, it was super fun. We got to go do the safaris, go ride on the sand dunes, ride camels, do all that. Experience a lot of their culture, see some of their, you know, d their dances, like the belly dances, um, stuff like that. But, I mean, it was super cool. Everybody's super inviting, super clean, super nice out there. Everybody has money, um, but they don't act like it. You know, they're just, they're humble people. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was awesome training out there. I, I'm glad I got to go out there early so I can, you know, get adjusted to the time change. And, you know, I, land, I landed at the right time and, you know, adjusted my body within a day to get on schedule for my sleep schedule and then just continue training out there and getting ready for the match. But I mean, you guys already know me. I go in there knowing like I'm just going to destroy these people. And I mean, no offense to John or any of my other opponents in the past. It's like, I just know what I'm capable of, you know, and I, I go there training and keeping that mindset. Wow, that's dope, bro. And, and take us that moment when you won that fight, when you got up on stage, like and like the the end of results, what you were feeling and, and everything, bro, that was going through your head at that moment. Well, I was getting frustrated, to be honest. I mean, they call me for flinching twice again for some reason. Uh, the fact that, like, I even ask in the rules meeting, like, hey, do I, you know, I'm going to bite down. Is it flinching if I bite down like this? They say, no, you're allowed to bite down. You're allowed to tense up. You're allowed to tighten up. And the fact that they call me for flinching on the first one when I didn't flinch on, you know, I mean, I'll give them the first one because I squatted down a little too much, let's say. But... Like, for the second one, I shouldn't have been called flinching. So I knew I was just, like, I was fed up with it. So I knew I was going to knock him out. And after the second hit, I already knew he was done. So I was super pumped. But everybody behind me, like I said, the fans there, everybody there were super crazy, super awesome. They were cheering for me. They were just, you know, my name. And I already knew when that third hit was coming, I turned around and I told them, I was like, that's it. Oh man! And what did you do for celebration? Right after you won, brother Dana White put your belt. Yeah. What, what you guys do like for celebration? What what was? I know you or your wife came out too. So what what kind of stuff did you do to you know to feel good? You know? 
Oh, no, I, uh, so first I hugged Dana White because he dropped my belt. He felt bad. I picked it up and I just hugged him. I was like, thanks. I told you I was going to win this. He was like, of course. He's like, I knew you were going to do it. And, um, <laughs> and then afterwards, like my whole family, my mom went, my stepdad, my friends, I had like five friends out there. Like it was crazy. There was a bunch of, a big old group of us. So we just went out, got drinks afterwards, uh, went dancing, had fun, hung out with Frank and all those guys. Like it was a blast. Azael was there his wife we were all hanging out just dancing at this club drinking and it was it was definitely fun that's what's up man did they have some reggaeton at least you know what I'm they saying? were actually no they did they were playing everything it was actually good it was dope they actually love reggaeton out there the song i walked out to was mark anthony's song but in their like language and it was like abu dhabi music it was like the number one song in abu dhabi so i walked out to that wow that's, that's pretty wild, brother. That's pretty wild. And, and there was a, I'm not going to lie, there was a part where I saw you took some pictures, like, like you on the sand and like going to like this beautiful mosque. It was like all white. It, it looked yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Um, can you tell us like that, that moment when you went inside? I, I bet it was beautiful, you know? To oh, see. yeah. It's, it looks almost like it's like, it looks fake. It's so beautiful, you know? It's like, it's it's too be it's too beautiful to be real is what the way you look at it like it was like me the crazy Hawaiian dumpling John Davis like all of us like the main card people we all went into the mosque and did um like a tour with some of the YouTubers we got to go out on the the carpet actually we got to go out on the carpet in the center and like yeah it was it was surreal like and it you felt peaceful it was weird like when you go there like not weird in a bad way but like weird in a good way it was like you as soon as you walk there it's just so peaceful and you feel like i don't know this energy wow oh, brother that's amazing and i know you went to mexico brother tell us please i, I had i had to see because that's uh that's where my dad's from so I, I had to it looked like you were you know trying different tequilas and um, if you could take us to that moment, you know, your your journey in Mexico, I don't know if it's your first time, but I thought it was really cool that you got to, like, try different spots. People treat you so nice, you know. No, that was a, that was another cool spot. Um, I got to go to Tequila, Mexico. Uh, I got to go to uh, Amatitan. So we have uh, new sponsors of Power Slap. Uh, it's a tequila company, Dios Azul. And they invited me out to go with uh, Nitro, uh, Nitro Circus Cat. His name's Tyler. Um, but yeah, we, we went out there with our new sponsors because they're sponsoring Nitro Circus and Power Slap. Got to go taste all the tequilas. Got to go around. They took us to their distillery. Great people. Great humans. I mean, it was awesome. They made us feel like family. And you'll see a lot of them now at Power Slap. But yeah, it's going to be amazing. So we were just out there doing content, filming content, and yeah, you'll see some videos coming out soon. Oh, you're good. You're good, but I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. Well, look, brother, I know, you know, I know you're a busy man. And, and uh, one of my last questions, you already know, like one, you know, being a world champion now, you know, changing history, being a big leader uh, for the Latino uh, community. I think this is huge because, you know, I've I've seen you. I, we had this, you know, podcast together about six months before, you know, six uh -huh. months ago. And to have you, you know, shine, you know, like the song, shine bright like a diamond. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm <laughs> so you're doing big stuff, brother. Uh, what can you say to our Latino community that you, uh, any like encouraging words you could share? I mean, honestly, everybody in our community already knows we're strong. We're hard-headed. I mean, when we set our mind to do something, we're going to do it. Just continue to do that. Work hard like we always work. Don't get lazy. I mean, everybody in our in our community, I mean, already knows. Like, our work ethic is just through the roof. So, I mean, you could get anywhere with how hard you guys work. So, I mean, just continue to do what you're doing and hold ourselves, you know, properly and, you know, professionally. And we'll get to the places we want to get. I love it, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. That was Thank that you. was deep, man. I, I, I appreciate that. And um, well, look, guys. Um, you know, this is the outlet to reality. Uh, the oldest podcast in Vegas and Chicago every Tuesday. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Chi chi. 
Y'all know where to find me. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, the Olive to Reality. And my Snapchat is Take More Pass It. And my TikTok is at Yakov28. And Isaiah, it's an honor to have you back on the show. Uh, brother, where can my fans find you? Isaiah underscore power slap on Instagram and Isaiah slaps on TikTok.